Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and today we're gonna be talking about locating delta and river crappie. This is gonna be primarily delta, but a lot of these exact same tactics work on rivers. So if you live near a river and not near a delta, don't freak out. You can still utilize a ton of this information. Now, I'm not gonna get into a lot of the rigging or anything like that. There's gonna be a few different style retrievals that I think can help you locate uh, crappie and a few different baits. So we are gonna get into that, but first things first, general location in the winter on a current bay system. That just means a moving water bay system like a delta or river. First thing I want you to think about, early in the fall, later in the fall, areas that you've been out fishing or notice bait fish being prevalent, minnows or shad, okay? And that tends to be near creek mouths, bays, marinas. They start to migrate as that water starts to cool because uh, phytoplankton's in there, which is that greenish color in the water. Zooplankton, microorganisms feed on that. Then shad and other bait fish species feed on zooplankton, okay? Which are those microorganisms feeding on that other source of life, which is a plant life. So what happens is all that microorganism stuff that's feeding the bait fish the crappie are following them. So early in the fall and later in the fall, you don't often locate the crappie immediately. They're still in their summertime places and we'll get into that in an entirely different video. But what I want you to realize is the crappie do catch up to them. They progressively follow them into these tributaries, into these long dead end coves, um, into coves that have creek channels. Um, now why that is, okay, in a creek channel, when, when people say go fish the creeks, the mouth of the creeks for crappie, what happens is there's a lot of nutrients on hillsides and grass and golf courses and homes and everything else from yards and natural runoff that's going to start entering this water in the fall. And when it becomes very nutrient rich, phytoplankton blooms happen, okay, which is that greenery in the water. And that's what the zooplankton feed on. So the whole cycle of life moves into these areas. And this often happens in marinas too. Another reason why marinas are such a prevalent target is because there's generally current nearby a marina, and then they have a marina right near a little brake current or a back eddy. They don't want the boats being slammed up against docks, so the marinas are protected. So the crappie like to get just outside of that current and into those protected areas, which serve as ambush areas often for them. And it's also calm protected water, which is generally nutrient rich around marinas, which attracts all that bait fish at the same time when they start feeding up in the fall. So wherever you see that bait fish in the fall is more than likely a high odd that the crappie are going to be in those zones in the winter. One thing I want you to remember, smaller the crappie, the bigger the schools. There could be a crappie that's six inches, there could be 500 of them in that school. A crappie that's 10 inches, there may be 30 or 40. You get a crappie 12, 15, 18 inches. That's where they're gonna start being in three, four, five fish at a time. And sometimes the real magnum crappie are kind of like solo artists. Though they tend to be in the same area, there'll be one here, one 30 feet down the way, one another 30 feet down the way. And this is a really interesting tactic. You start fishing for them more like bass at that point. And I'll tell you some tips on catching those, but first things first, let's focus. Tributaries, dead ends, marinas, steep drop-offs around those areas, steep weed lines around those areas, rock walls leading into those areas. So a long dead end, a cove with a creek channel, um, a marina, just outside of where the current is, a lot of the time they don't want to be in the dead end of the marina unless it's a long straightaway, then they tend to be in the dead end of those marinas. Now, I'm going to give you a little key about the perfect places. If it's very, very shallow, meaning less than three foot deep, those crappie aren't going to really be back in that three foot deep and shallower unless there's a creek channel coming in. If it's a dead end cove, um, where you've located the shad, and now you're going to look for those crappie there in the winter. If it's a dead end cove, they tend to be right about on that five foot of depth out to about eight to 10 foot of depth. Now, if there's no grass along the bottom, they're gonna be near the nearest structure. If you have a hundred trees in there and one tree is massive, they're gonna tend to be on that bigger one. The bigger the current break, the better for them. Now, let's say there's no trees, you clearly spot no grass on your graph. Now they're gonna be up near a wall. Whether that's a rock wall or there's grass growing right along that wall, they will come up super tight. 
their structure and cover orientated and if it's bigger or vertical that's what they're going to prefer so if it's a really void type of cove okay you go into the back of this cove where you've seen a ton of shad earlier in the fall and you're like well there's got to be crappie in there you don't see grass you don't see trees go look at the bank don't pick the slower tapering bank always start with the faster tapering bank and cover that until you get your first bite and we're going to go over that first bite if you get inside a marina okay where all those boats are docked up right as you come out of the faster current that faster moving water the first areas you want to look at are vertically steep areas okay the steeper areas and then you want to pay attention to the grass too okay if there's a lot of grass in the area they're going to prefer the grass line and what i mean by the grass line let's say the grass is growing out to about six foot deep and it's right about level you're going back and forth with the boat you see that grass line that's going to be a target all right now with these boat slips you want to look right where the boat slips meet that grass line so if you notice that grass line's really tall at around six foot deep follow that grass line until it runs into either a tree uh, a rock wall or a boat slip those are very, very high percentage areas. Remember, we're talking about a schooling species. Sometimes you can look for a day at a time and not find a school of crappie. But once you find that school of crappie, you can generally sit on them and beat the heck out of them. Rarely ever do you see a guy posing with one or two crappies. You usually see a big stringer of crappie or nothing. Hang with us, guys. We'll be right back. Hey guys, did you know that Juris Truly is now hosting Lucky Tackle Box's monthly panfish instructionals? And aside from relentless fish catching, I'll be breaking down the rigging and the gear you need to get going along the way. And of course, a few extra tips to help you score more fish on the goodies included in your box. So remember, the tug is our drug. So go visit LuckyTackleBox.com and get signed up today. Bigger, better, batter. The evolution of the buzz bait is upon us. The evolution baits grass burners a high performance bass snatcher machine. High end components, inline displacement, Larger profile, balanced body for fast or slower retrieves, better deflection, and oversized treble hooks. You wouldn't bring a slingshot to a gunfight, would you? Find out more at evolutionbaits.com. Ever tried pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Did you know that Beeline makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs? From the super strong abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch super stealthy CX premium, or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with Beeline's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, P-Line's got it covered. To find out more, visit P-Line.com. P-Line, baby. Hey guys, Nick the Informative Fisherman here. And when it comes to my hooks, I demand superior craftsmanship, innovative design, and proven success. And that's why I've chose to partner with Mustad Fishing Hooks. With over 180 years in the business, you can't go wrong. So if you don't want to risk losing a big one, I suggest you do the right thing. Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to Boat Country and Ribbon? With one of the largest selections of aluminum boats in the valley, from North River, Hughescraft, and Crestliner, chances are they have the right boat for you. And they also have a full-on service center to take care of all your maintenance or repair needs. If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. We'll see you there. Absolutely smoke that thing. Look at that photopotamus, man. Big one. Big one. Real big one. Yeah, God, choked it, dude, choked it. Look at that. Yeah, I want that headbang. Come on. So what really makes river and delta crappie so different than lakes, you're going to see, I live in Northern California, okay, and spider rigging is very common in the Midwest and the East Coast, but in California, you never see it. We're limited to two rods a piece if you buy a second rod stamp. But... And you can fish our lakes very similar to you guys' lakes with the rods off the front, a little quarter ounce weight, and slowly, slowly troll at a half mile an hour or one mile an hour and go over brush piles and catch them. That doesn't really apply on a river and that doesn't really apply on a delta way. And the reason for this is the current. The current's stronger. These crappie need current breaks. So generally in a river or a delta situation, you're gonna be throwing a float rig or a cast and retrieve style rig with like a 132nd ounce jig head and a white grub 
or a bobber and a trout magnet under that to target them. And the reason why is we have to throw very tight to our structure and cover because these fish are outside the current break. Unless you're trolling with a planer board to get it up super tight to there like you can, you can use a yellow bird little tiny planer board and troll it up tighter if that's what you want to do. Um, though it's hard to manage because you're gonna be running into a lot of objects trolling that tight. Spider rigging, in theory you could, but you are getting a little bit shallower. Like I said, they're generally from that eight to five foot deep range um, once you start getting into these dead ends. They don't really like to get any shallower than five feet unless there's a creek channel and out beyond eight foot deep, they're usually gonna be on a bridge or a rock wall uh, when it comes to that depth, entering that dead end, entering that cove or entering that tributary arm. Now these crappie are generally gonna hang in these areas until their pre-spawn kicks in. That's right around 53 to 55 degrees again once that water comes up from the upper 40s. Um, maybe your area doesn't get that cold and when you notice crappie are spawning where you can visually see them sitting in the trees or on the bottom on little rock piles spawning to where they don't wanna leave, that's a pretty clear indicator as well. Um, but right outside of these winter areas, all these dead ends, these bays, these marinas, the crappie are gonna spawn in that first nearest hard bottom area that has brush. The crappie like to spawn a little bit deeper than the bass, and once that kicks on, this winter pattern's gonna fall apart. Let's generally call it 55 degrees in the uh, early spring. And then it's a completely different game, and we'll do another video on that. So when you start locating these fish, and I'll give you dead end examples on the Delta, Whiskey Slough, Primary Dead End, Telephone Cut, um, any of these marinas, Lincoln Village, um, Lads, all of these areas had the bait fish in them. There's a long, tons of dead end sloughs on the Delta. I'll show you an example. I'll bring up a map right here. Every one of these dead ends, if you've seen shad in them, they are gonna have crappie located in them somewhere. And there's that magic difference between that eight to 10 foot depth in that five foot depth zone. And it's gonna be on something vertical or it's going to be a tree on the downside of that current break. Now, what you need to keep in mind is you have to get bit and you have to be positive you got bit. So you have to fish very, very slow and some of these areas are very broad. So what's gonna help you key in, all right? If the water is really dirty, if you can't see, beyond a foot deep, you need to use the color white. And this is just for searching. It may not be the perfect color, but a white two inch to three inch grub is gonna make sure they can see it and hopefully one active crop, you'll hit it. You're just gonna feel that little boop boop, just a little, little thud in the line, something weird. Anything that you think may have been a bite, you need to stop and thoroughly pick it apart. One thing you're gonna try to do right here in the winter time is you're gonna throw the float, all right? And what you wanna be looking at is the top of the grass line. If you see grass, you wanna be about a foot over the grass. If you see grass at four foot deep, set your float um, to drop that little lure down at about um, a foot over the top of the grass. Four foot deep, set it three foot deep. If it's five foot deep, set it four foot deep. And what this is gonna do is generally in a grassy area, those crappie are gonna be right in the top of that grass, or if you see a weed line, target the edge of that weed line. So look at your depth. If you see that it's coming out five foot deep and that's where your taller grass is, they're gonna be on the edge of that. If there's no grass, you need to get it up within a foot or two of that rock wall. If you see a back eddy, you see a bridge piling, you need to get right behind that little break. Now remember, they're not always going to eat that suspended style bait. You throw in the float and it sits there. Sometimes that'll get them just the lightest little shake to get that little quiver in your bait. It's gonna give you that classic slow motion takedown of your float or your float's just gonna start drifting off sideways. Crappie do some really weird finicky bites, but they don't always bite that. Delivering a bait on a horizontal plane, meaning middle of the water column, your bait coming right through the middle is another very key technique. And that works great when you're spider rigging in the middle of a lake and you got all those rods off the front and you're just traveling along like that. But in a delta way or a river, that doesn't apply because you can't generally get that close. So what you have to do is you need to cast and try to parallel that key structure or cover and just move your bait subtly in that same depth zone. If it's just a rock wall or a steep drop, 
Get as tight as you can to it to where the crappie can pin it against the wall. If there's a lot of grass out there, look for the grass line. If you're clearly graphing them, and I'll show you what crappie look like on the graph right here, that is also a key tactic to let that bait cast it out if it's a light bait watch your line make sure it hits the bottom pop it up off the bottom and then slow roll it in if you feel just some lightest tension that's one of your key indicators a bluegill a red ear um, lots of other panfish hit very aggressive and hard a crappie oftentimes you're just going to feel tension in the line and load up and crappie have a much higher tendency of pulling off a hook than other species do to where if you feel one and then all of a sudden oh i lost it that's another very key indicator that you had a crappie on so do not be quick to move on if you're coming down the bank and covering areas on the trolling motor have it on a slow setting if you're not patient enough to do it stop looking for the crappie it is a patience patience game now i'm not saying you need to cover a giant area going that slow bounce around to what you think looks best eight to five foot at dead ends uh, right in front of each one of those little creek channels and cover that premium looking stuff fish it slow and steady and another thing like i said water's dirty and you're using white if it's clear the same applies green pumpkin flat colors don't use a lot of reflective little shiny sparkles in the winter time for some reason, shiny reflective things in the wintertime never seem to work well for me. That's a summertime clear water thing. So use a subtle natural watermelon red flake, um, kind of looks like a crawdad or just a brownish pumpkin color or a dark green pumpkin color. Something very subtle and natural for that cleaner water. Try to stay a little farther back if you can. In the dirty water, that's not such a bad thing. Now, you're gonna see a lot of guys fishing straight over the top of crappie. They're gonna pull up and vertically fish them. That's okay if it's about six to eight foot deep. Anything shallower than that and you're catching the crappie, you wanna fish them from a distance. You wanna fish them with a float or cast out to them. Now, if you're casting to an area and your float's standing up in six, seven foot of water, that does mean you can get closer. Just try to drift in on them. Don't be moving the trolling motor a lot. Uh, once you do locate them like that and if you're stuck fishing dirty water this is where your search baits like a uh, road runner is good instead of just a little jig head with a grub if it's very muddy and very dirty um, and they're still there they're still going to be there they're not going anywhere that's where you want a little vibration a little rooster tail a little road runner with an underspin a little bit a little bit harder vibration now if it's very calm out and the water's slick on the surface, the sun's up, this is where you want to be subtle. You want to go real small on your plastics and just really show the crappie something very non-territorial, non-aggressive, a very small, subtle, tiny grub, a little straight tail worm. Very, very natural and small. The bigger the profile and the more vibration it has in that dirty water is going to help them find it. Um, the opposite stands true in cleaner or calmer conditions, more subtle, more natural looking color. Um, remember, no aggressive hook sets. Very just reel into it or just barely put some tension or have a very, very limber rod if you are going to be a little bit more aggressive with your hook set. I, people watch some of my old videos where I'm setting the hook really hard on a slow action. Um, ultralight rod and yeah I was setting the hook hard but it's a super limber rod so it wasn't tearing through these little paper mouth fish um, with that being said guys the lighter the line is going to get you more bites it's a more subtle natural presentation for crappie um, yes if you're vertically jigging them line diameter doesn't matter that much I would always suggest four pound test four pound test is a good all around the board line. Uh, Copolymer lines like the P-Line Floor Clear is great when you're fishing 20 or 30 feet from the boat and one of those little subtle, uh, little subtle soft mouth fish grabs it. A line with a stretch is actually a good thing versus a low stretch line. A low stretch line is gonna tear through them very easy and you may not even notice that you did have one because uh, it just tore through immediately and felt identical to grass versus a line with a little bit of stretch like a copolymer like the flora clear uh, can really help you out all right guys now i want to show you what crappie look like on the graph versus your bass and your red ears so you see this long line right here i'm going to look for a shadow out behind it it's winter time right now so the bass are most likely not going to be suspended they're going to be down on the bottom so that longer white line i don't see a shadow off behind it more than likely a bass these individual white dots right here, 
These are going to be your bluegills and your red ears. If there was black dots out behind them, the shadow from the side imaging and balled up a little bit tighter, I would guess crappie. So when you see individual white mark, white mark, white mark, these are red ears, going to be bluegills. If I see them really balled up tight, like a really tight concentration, and I see shadows off behind them, that's most likely schooling crappie. But you can see that one bigger line right here, that's most likely a largemouth. So let's go try to track down some crappies. I'm gonna show you what they look like on 2D and, uh, and down imaging as well. All right, guys, I just paused the screen here. Um, now, what you're looking at, that black column's below the boat. I paused it so it's not moving. This line right here, I'm out behind my house. This is the wall. And a lot of the time you're gonna see these white patches and these can be mistaken for patches of rocks even though rocks look exactly like that. So what I'm gonna do when I see these, I see individual white marks. They're more rounded, they're not elongated. So these are most likely big red ears. Could be some individual large crappie, but I do see this white cluster. So what I'm gonna do is try to zoom in as much as possible, even though it's gonna look very pixelated. What I'm looking for is little dark shadows next to them, which I do see. I see these white checks, dark shadow, white check, dark shadow, which means they're close to the bottom, but they're still casting a shadow, which tells me they're not rocks. They're balled up real tight like that, a big white ball of dots. That is your crappie right there. So even though you can come into these fish and you can throw a float on them, you can bring a slow moving bait through the middle, suspend it in the middle of that water column or dance a jig off the bottom. A lot of the time it could take you 15, 20, 30 casts to trigger one crappie into eating. But once you trigger them, a lot more are gonna start actively feeding at that point. All you gotta do is get one fired up in that school and they're gonna get it. So right here, I'm just gonna hesitate for a minute and I'm gonna show you a 2D traditional sonar image of what the crappie look like and what bluegill look like and then I'm gonna show you that telltale sign on that 2D with the crappie clearly stacked up, which they're real obvious on 2D traditional sonar, but you have to get straight over the top of them. A lot of the time on the delta and the rivers, the side imaging is gonna help you a lot strictly for being able to cruise down and spot these schools like I'm showing you on the side imaging here. I'm Nick the Informative Fisherman. Hopefully these tips helped you out, guys. Remember to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, on YouTube at Informative Fisherman. Best of fishing, send me some results. I wanna see some big crappie or some nice stringers and some crappie guys. Remember, the limit here in California, I don't know about your area, is 25 a piece. I never take more than 10 per person. I want that school to refacilitate itself. I want them to go on to spawn and come back year after year. So try not to take more than 10. Best fishing guys, we'll see you next time.